with Gayathri Murugayan sentenced to 30 years in jail yesterday, it closes a chapter in the Myanmar maid abuse case where 24-year-old Pyang Ngai Don was starved and tortured to death. Two other related cases are pending in court involving Gayathri's then husband as well as her mother. Well, what lessons can we learn from this and recent cases of maid abuse? Let's hear more from Shamsul Kamar, Executive Director of the Centre for Domestic Employees. Welcome to the show, Shamsul. So what has this particular case and of course, you know, other recent cases taught us whether it's power dynamics between employer and employee or the necessity uh, of the community to watch out for such abuse cases? Yes, uh, thank you, Olivia, for having, uh, having me on the show. I think it's important for us to put things in perspective. Uh, I would like to give context and allay the perception that physical abuse of migrant domestic workers is rampant here in Singapore. It is not. And if I may shum, uh, share some figures to all of you, especially MOMs, uh, which shows that the official statistics uh, that, 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 that we have at the moment is that there are some 250,000 domestic workers here in Singapore. Uh, in March this year, MOM reported for the period of around 2017 to 2020, there was about 270 physical abuse cases. So this translates to only about 0.1% of the total migrant domestic worker community in Singapore, if we see it as an average. And out of these, uh, less than half of the complaints uh, warranted, actually uh, warranted enforcement uh, action after the investigations were eventually carried out. Having said that, Every case of physical abuse is still one too many. However, what's learned uh, from this, what have we learned all right, from this uh, issue of migrant domestic abuse that we're talking about recently, all right, I strongly feel is that there is a need whereby in this endeavor, it requires both the individual and a whole society effort to counter this. As a society, we must recognize that our domestic workers are also fellow human beings. And this is something that we need to inculcate to our Singaporeans, um, create that awareness, even to our children. And many of these workers left the comfort of their homes to work in Singapore and care for our families. They too aspire to secure a better life, a better future for their loved ones. So we strongly advocate for employers to demonstrate empathy, treat their migrant domestic workers as though they are part of the extended household and not to regard them as lesser beings or just someone who are working and are uh, in some way at their disposal, mm. which we worry about this power balance thing. So everyone can play their part, in my view. The public, neighbours, right, uh, people from the, on the streets, or even shopkeepers who are familiar with the domestic workers or even medical professionals. Whenever you encounter a migrant domestic worker, pay more attention. All right. Sometimes we can pull out these red flags. Like if someone is hurt or injured or someone goes to the doctor, the doctor sees that she, she's got bruises. It is up for us to step forward and make sure that we can help these domestic workers and, and uh, immediately should they need help. All right. The, the, the effort from the public and from society is most important because every issue, if it can be detected early, would be of a great help to our domestic workers. So don't take the bystander effect lah, where we think somebody else will do it. You know I mean? It's not my problem. It is a problem or an issue or rather an endeavour which I think all Singaporeans can own together. For sure. Well, so you mentioned things that the community can do, like doctors, right? They can report if yeah. they observe certain yeah. uh, conditions or, or anything. Um, on the, I guess on the bigger picture, um, can... What other systemic measures can be uh, unnecessary, do you think? You know, it was reported in April that the Manpower Ministry will conduct uh, house visits to ensure that domestic helpers are living and working in proper conditions. So besides that, what other similar measures can be put in place? Yeah. So as I mentioned just now, I think um, to, to really address this issue, we require a combination of community interventions as well as systems. And I'm of the view that there are actually many safeguards and laws that adequately protect the interests of our migrant domestic workers. Right? For instance, in one system, if I may share, the Ministry of Manpower actually uh, 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 
empowers some service providers to do compulsory settling in program for migrant domestic workers before they are deployed for work. Mm. Uh, in this program and in these sessions, the domestic workers are actually educated on how and where they can seek help. They are also taught to identify situations where they might be of a or where they might be compromised or in such ways. And in these programs and in these sessions, they can talk about it. Over the last five years, CDE has also complemented some of these efforts, all right? And we have also put in place a whole holistic suite of support services, including touch points to ensure uh, migrant domestic workers know and where or how to seek help. We believe there are importance, the importance of having systems by the government, but I think NGOs, community interventions are also just equally important. So if I may share, Briefly, all right, CDE has 1,000 volunteers or ambassadors who are on the ground. They act as eyes and ears. They are like the grassroots leaders. All right? And there are many communities all around in Singapore. Their job is to pick up issues on the ground. And if they hear someone is not doing well and so on and so forth, they're actually trained to alert CDE staff officers. And if we need to, we will uh, engage the, mm. the, the issue uh, directly. All right? mm. CDE also, uh, as many of you may know, uh, conducts uh, interviews, right? migrant domestic worker interview privately with every domestic worker that has just been deployed within the first three to six months of their uh, employment uh, journey. So our endeavour here is to assess if they are coping well with work. Uh, we do it in a combination of phone calls or WhatsApp calls to better understand the surrounding uh, workplace that they have. Right? And should there be uh, a large serious offences, we will address it, we will inform the authorities and we work on it. Right? So with all this, uh, if I may share, we have also put in all these measures so that our migrant domestic workers feel safe and protected. And we'll continue to work with our government agencies and other industry players all right, to see how we can better do this so that this holistic endeavour, not just by CDE, the, also the good work of other NGOs and organisations, to ensure of make our migrant domestic mm. workers feel safe and protected while they're here in Singapore. Right. Well, Shamsul, thank you very much for your time today. It was very informative, very insightful, and it has certainly uh, given us a lot of food for thought. I've been speaking with Shamsul Kamar, the Executive Director for, of the Centre for, for Domestic Employees.